Expectant mothers are spending generously for themselves and their newborns. What marketing strategies is the industry taking to capture their hearts? Chinese capital is rapidly flowing into the Korean market. Will this be an opportunity or a threat for Korea's depressed economy? The next generation lighting that can be used in various sports stadiums has been developed. What is the core principle of PLS lighting that is similar to sunlight and has sharply reduced eye fatigue? Anyone with a smartphone can sort out counterfeit bills? We will introduce hidden QR code that will be used in preventing various forgeries and falsifications. Inter-Korean relations appear to ease recently with Pyongyang's participation in the Incheon Asian Games and a high-ranking North Korean official's visit to Seoul. But the relationship chilled again with the latest naval clash in the Yellow Sea. What is behind wavering relations between the two Koreas? Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, in modern Korea, there's an official day for almost everything. And believe it or not, believe it or not, October the 10th is Pregnant Women's Day. And this day actually may have been designated for good reason, because in Korea, the birth rate is falling dramatically and society is aging at a rapid pace. So this day is designed to encourage women to have more children. So, in an era when most people only have one child, they invest heavily in that one child. And part of these investments are prenatal education. Despite the falling birth rate and economic depression, the market for pregnant women continues to get larger. The flood of various products and marketing that satisfy the body and mind of pregnant mothers is leading to an upheaval in the retail industry. South Korea's largest baby fair kicked off in the second week of October at an exhibition hall in Ilsan, Gyeonggi-do province. The exhibition is for pregnancy, birth and baby education and it provides various information for expectant and new mothers and dads-to-be. The latest fair boasted the largest size since its launch with a total of 250 companies attending the event and filling 900 booths. Many expectant mothers flock to the place to watch the exhibition. Korea Baby and Edu Fair, or Kobe, that has been attracting record high audiences each year, has expanded to an exhibition in which an average of 100,000 people visit annually. As the year passes, the number of companies participating in the event also increased, more than doubling the number of corporate participants in the first year. Despite the nation's low birth rate, Korea's pregnancy, birth and baby product market has rapidly grown into a huge industry worth about 25.3 billion US dollars annually. As the average age of pregnant women has risen and as each household has only one or two children, financially capable and information-savvy parents are spending more generously on their children. Various products with all sorts of functions and effects are drawing attention from audiences. 
The products on display include food and nutritional supplements for health-conscious pregnant women, as well as skincare products and maternity clothes to soothe expectant moms' sensitive skin amid a sharp change in their appearances. Countless other products, including products for prenatal education, such as books, videos and prenatal heart listeners, as well as lactation products, baby bath products, baby skincare products are on display. Companies also fiercely promoted various services like insurance for unborn babies, tours and umbilical cord blood-related services. In Korea, a new phrase, eight pockets, one mouth, has even appeared amid a phenomenon in which not only parents, but grandparents and aunts from both sides of the families also care for one child materially and emotionally. Due to the rising number of working moms, more dads and grandparents are helping nursing their children. Products customized for them also drew attention. There were a substantial number of audiences who visited in family units to experience these products. Korean Air has also been introducing special in-flight services for pregnant moms. Since October of last year, it has been providing comfort items for pregnant passengers in its entire routes. Such service has been created because prenatal education tours are gaining popularity from expectant mothers. Prenatal education tours that give healing time for the moms and unborn babies has been established as a culture. As expectant parents spend generously on taking domestic or overseas trips, the travel industry is also booming, releasing a series of prenatal education related to products. 최근에는 태교 여행 차원에서 해외로 나가는 여행 수요가 꾸준히 증가하고 있는데요. 특히 괌이나 사이판 같은 지역을 많이 선호하는 경향이 있습니다. 괌이나 사이판 같은 경우는 일단 우리나라에서 그 비행기로 닿는 시간이 한 5시간 이내로 매우 좀그 가까운 거리 위치에 있고요. 그 다음에 휴양지이기 때문에 어, 다양한 컨셉의 이 임산부들을 위한 다양한 컨셉의 어, 휴양 리조트들이 많이 좀 즐비해 있습니다. Pregnant mothers have established high-end consumption culture based on their robust social activities and stable financial standings. The market for these moms won't stop here. It is expanding further, helped by different marketing strategies and product development. 한국의 고령화 문제를 다룰 때 항상 같이 등장하는 것이 역시 출산율의 문제입니다. 한국의 고령화는 아기를 적게 낳기 때문에 나타나는 문제라고 보고 있는 것인데요. 그렇기 때문에 국가적 차원에서 향후에 그 출산율을 확대시키기 위한 전략을 많이 세울 겁니다. 그런 측면에서 이 육아 관련 시장은 계속해서 커질 수밖에 없고요. 또한 그 한국 사회에서 웰빙 바람이라든지 건강이라든지 안전에 대한 이슈가 커지기 때문에 계속해서 고급화되는 임산부 관련 물건들 그리고 유아 제품들의 시장들이 커질 것은 전망할 수 있겠습니다. Mothers who want to provide everything to their precious babies are quickly rising as a very powerful consumer group. Today, companies continue to fight fiercely to win the hearts of expectant mothers who have emerged as VIPs in the retail industry. Foreign players have been sharply raising their investments in Korea. In fact, this year, capital inflow has reached a record high. But unlike in previous years, the majority of this money is not coming from classic capitals of capital like London and New York. It's coming from China. So, why are Chinese investing so heavily in Korea at this stage? What are they investing in? And could there be some negatives, as well as the obvious positives, of massive Chinese capital inflows? These are some of the questions we have for our guest today. He's a China expert and a professor of business administration here at the elite Korea University in Seoul. Dr. Kim ik -soo, welcome to BizLine. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks for being with us. Let's start with some numbers. Can you give us some idea, a dollar figure, how big is this Chinese capital inflow into the, uh, the Korean markets? Chinese actually invested a total of $21.7 billion of money in Korea. Uh, mm. There are three major areas. Mm. First area is money market, okay. uh, including 
stock and bond. Okay. And secondly, they also invest heavily in FDI, foreign direct investment mm. sector, uh, including merger and acquisition, M&A. Yeah. And lastly, they also uh, bring lots of money uh, to do some sightseeing in Korea. So tourism sector is the last okay. uh, sector. Okay, let's not talk about tourism though. We're more interested in the, uh, the capital inflows. Right. Tell me which sectors of Chinese, uh, of the uh, financial markets, need of the M&A markets, mm -hmm. are uh, Chinese firms interested in? Uh, as far as money market is concerned, mm. they mainly invest in bond market because it's mm. more, more or less safe Safer, than yeah. uh, stock market. Uh -huh. And uh, as uh, 1997, mm. uh, they began to invest in Korea. And as at the end of last year, they had a, a balance of about what, $124 billion of bond. And they hold that kind of uh, amount mm. uh, this year. And these are both... Uh, Corporate papers and government papers? Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. And how about the, uh, the financial markets, the M&A markets? What sectors of industry are Chinese players more interested in? Uh, there what are kind of companies kinds of are they looking at? Firstly, they uh, invest heavily in real estate sector, that mm. is property market, uh, because the, they want to buy some uh, large tract of land in Jeju Island and some other local uh, cities. Mm. Secondly, they also invest in uh, manufacturing industry and yep. some digital content industries mm. uh, to acquire some strategic assets of Korean firms yeah. because they are lacking in uh, brand power and technology. Gotcha. So okay. by acquiring Korean firms, they want to strengthen their presence in the global market. Okay, understood. But previous sort of high-profile Chinese M&As mm -hmm. in Korea, you'll remember Sanyong Motors mm -hmm. uh, was acquired by a Chinese automotive company. Hydus LCD was uh, taken over by a Chinese chip maker. Mm -hmm. These proved pretty disastrous. That's they right. were essentially technology strips, asset mm -hmm. strips, and then the investors pulled out and left mm -hmm. the companies a lot worse off than they'd mm -hmm. actually been before. Um, do you think the current wave of Chinese capital will do a better job? In, in their takeovers of Korean firms? Well, every country and every firm learns a lesson from the past uh, strategy and past performance. Mm. Uh, I think China is no exception. Mm. So uh, uh, Chinese firms, uh, having learned a lot from the past uh, mistakes, they can do a better job in the uh, future. Uh, mm. Uh, with regard to Sangyong case, actually, mm. uh, Shanghai automotive industry yep. Actually, they feel that is a, a bit failure yeah. in globalization attempt. Mm. But having said that, they are now in a better position to exercise or implement better strategy in acquiring and managing Korean firms. Uh, for example, Lenovo is doing mm. quite a good job in the global market by mm. you know, acquiring uh, IBM PC division. Mm. And Haya also doing quite well in America. And many uh, small and medium-sized uh, Chinese firms are acquiring Korean apparel industry. Two firms are already acquired mm. by in China money. One is Avista. They okay. are selling, you know, you know, garment. Yeah, yeah. And the other is the uh, a very small, uh, you know, for kids garments. Uh, kids uh, clothing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I, I hadn't actually heard, I hadn't heard of these, um, these takeovers. How mm -hmm. do you assess them thus far? I mean, when did these take place? Two years ago, okay. they began to very aggressively come into market. Yeah. And uh, they are acquiring and they are, uh, you know, doing quite a lot of investment in digital content area. Mm. Uh, they put about $50 million in uh, CJ games, CJ okay. entertainment industry to uh, have some, you know, these the concerts with Korean mm. dramas and movies, cinemas. Gotcha. Yep. And secondly, they want to uh, capitalize the very strong demand in China. Uh, for example, cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Korean firms are really good at making those uh, cosmetic products. Yep. And they are providing uh, lots of, you know, you know raw materials and uh, uh, intermediate products. So, mm. so they want to invest in those uh, cosmetic firms. And lastly, yeah, as I said, you know, you know, the kids industry, yeah. uh, garments, and you know, some other PC uh, and then games. Mm. That kind of industry is uh, very popular to Chinese investors. Okay, you mentioned a little earlier that there mm -hmm. are particularly strong uh, Chinese capital flows going to Jeju Island, the yes. uh, famous 
holiday in Honeymoon Island off, mm -hmm. off uh, Korea's south coast. And I understand there are such strong concerns now that the government of Jeju has actually put a break on certain Chinese investments. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too familiar with this story. What's actually going on down there? Why is that, what investments are the Chinese making and why is there local concern? Well, Chinese are very ambitious and very aggressive in mm. uh, doing investment in Jeju Island because Jeju Island is very fam famous and popular to Chinese tourists. Uh, yeah, and am I correct in saying there's a visa-free travel to Jeju? Yes, right. okay. if they uh, meet the uh, predetermined requirement mm. to get the F2 visa, that is resident visa, temporarily, mm. uh, you know, given issue to Chinese tourists, they can stay there two and a half years okay. or so. Um, if they invest more, they can actually, you know, get the full residence visa. That, gotcha. that is F5. Okay. That is uh, serves as, as as a kind of incentive to uh, Chinese investors. Yeah. But you know, the uh, Jeju Island people do mm. not want their beautiful landscape is actually ruined by Chinese investors, mm. reckless investments. So they want to preserve the beautiful scenery of mm. the island. Secondly, there are too many casinos. Uh, industry in mm. Korea, mm. so they don't want those you know casinos built in the uh, civilian residence places. Mm. So they want to it, those. Sorry, is yeah. this actually taking place? You're saying they don't want the pristine landscape to be uh, you know destroyed. Um, is that actually happening? Are Chinese investors building? Well, it's a worry. It's a uh, fear. Uh, it's uh, not yeah, actually it's happening. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not concern. actually happening. But yeah. nobody knows exact details of the total master plan uh, actually envisioned by. Chinese investors mm. already some is, projects are. Is there are a master plan? Yeah, uh, we, so yeah, at, yeah. at the stage of getting approval, they have to submit their master plan about you know oh, the I, I total right. details. Got you. Okay. Yeah. These are ar architectural plans. So That's right. Right. Okay. Uh, but uh, actually, already some projects have been approved. Yeah. So one Hiryong governor cannot actually cancel sure. already approved project. But mm. uh, uh, in the uh, future project, they, are, they should be more circumspect and, and are cautious mm. in granting those permits. Approvals, for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. okay. okay, I mean, you know, I, I'm British, and even in Europe, there mm -hmm. is resentment at the, at the power of, of the German economy, which is, you know, the driving, the locomotive of the, mm -hmm. uh, the EU in, in many cases. Um, and of course, here in East Asia, China, China rather, is mm -hmm. potentially far more dominant than Germany is in Europe. I know there's considerable fear in some quarters in South Korea that Chinese investors are gobbling up a lot of North Korean resources mm -hmm. and perhaps even turning North Korea into uh, some sort of economic colony of China. Um, is there a fear in South Korea too that with the Chinese economy expanding so massively, its potential uh, increasing almost day by day, that the massive capital uh, mm -hmm. creation in China is going to spill across borders and that South Korea potentially could mm -hmm. be swallowed whole by China? Potentially, yes, but uh, South Korea is a bit different from North Korea. Of course, uh, yeah, sure. Yes. We have uh, lots of uh, strategic pros to uh, actually take advantage of the Chinese aggressiveness mm. and we can actually uh, find some alternative source of funding and financing mm. other than Chinese sources. Sure. So we can diversify the sources of revenue or sources of investment mm. you know, deviating from Chinese dominance. Yeah. That is one thing. But uh, as far as North Korea is concerned, we have a very great worry uh, that is actually covered up by the Chinese investment. Mm. Already commodity uh, mines are actually actually possessed or bought or mm. purchased by Chinese investment. So that is quite a worrying thing. But when it comes to South Korea, I think that that is a totally different pic picture. Mm. And Chinese do not have uh, such a enduring energy or resource to pouring into Korea. Uh, certain days they will peter out and the, the momentum will be weakened. Mm. in the near future. So uh, we don't have to too much worry about Chinese dominance in the Korean economy. Mm. But uh, the, I mean, the other question, of course, which comes back to what we were discussing a mm -hmm. little bit earlier, is that Chinese do want Korea technology. They do want Korean brand power. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Chinese, Chinese firms are indeed investing in many of the same sectors, their competitors. Mm -hmm. um, again, is there a fear that these investments um, in Korea uh, will eventually work for the Chinese investors and against the, the bigger interests of the Korean economy? 
Well, when it comes to uh, money market, I think there is some mm. uh, uh, psychological worry yeah. because sudden uh, actually inflow of Chinese money and sudden outflow of uh, Chinese money will uh, create some sort of chaos yeah. and uh, big turbulence in Korean markets. So that is a uh, great worry. But as, as far as the manufacturing sector is concerned, Samsung Electronics mm. still uh, is working very smart to uh, actually escape from Chinese dominance in uh, global smartphone market. Mm. Although there is some challenge from Xiaomi and Huawei yeah. and some other Lenovo and you know, the major brands in China, but still we have a very great technological advantage over China. Mm. So as far as we maintain the technology gap with China, uh, still Korea can main, uh, manage to actually create some sort of uh, niche market in, mm. in the global uh, area. Yeah, I mean, and of course this raises another question which has been talked about a great deal in Korea, whether, you know, Korea be can become a kind of service center for northeastern China. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Seoul now is, I think, the eighth largest financial market in the world. Mm -hmm. um, that there's a, a very, very well-educated populace here. People here are familiar with China, but also very, very familiar with international business norms as witness the tremendous success of the various Chebol. Is, it f is this a feasible vision? Could Korea um, hitch its economic cart to the Chinese horse and, uh, and run with it and become a service center for China? Uh, in a certain sense, China is more advanced in uh, service industry because mm. we are more or less uh, uh, biased towards manufacturing, manufacturing sector, sure. whereas Chinese have a long tradition mm. of operating service in this industry, including mm. you know retail, wholesale, mm. and tourism, etc. Mm. So uh, uh, also they have uh, lots of resources. Uh, actually, they uh, can bring from Singapore and Hong Kong, which we don't have. So in that sense, China has certain advantages in the service industry, but we have certain know-how in operating hotels and tourist industry mm. and bio or engineering mm. and well-being and Medicare, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So in that sector, actually, uh, Korean travel conglomerate can make inroads into China market and help them to operate more mm. in, a, in, a, in a healthy way yeah. or efficient way the hospitals and you know healthcare centers and many mm. uh hair care mm. uh, centers so in, in korea does have some significant advantages okay That's last right. question very very simple one mm -hmm. um looking ahead midterm long term is the rise of china um, a threat or an opportunity for korea i think it's, it's a threat as well as the opportunity at the same time so it's like a double-edged sword mm. uh, if you just uh, look at the opportunity side Still, we have much room to uh, cooperate with each other and collaborate on certain projects, not only in uh, China market, but also in the international yep. market. So uh, China is a uh, you know, best friend and neighbor mm. of Korea. So uh, by cooperating with China, we can ex expand our market share in global market. But also, at the same time, China is a big rival mm. and a competitor in, uh, in domestic as well as the overseas market because many of the products we are exporting overseas actually competing with Chinese mm -hmm. products, uh, not in price terms, but also in non-price terms. Mm. So we have to enhance our competitive edge over Chinese products. So if we maintain and expand our competitive edge, then I can uh, still, benefit side will overrun the risk side. Got you. Okay. Well, I think this is a discussion that we and indeed all South Koreans will be having uh, more and more uh, in the future because geography mm -hmm. is not going to change and China's economy will continue to rise. Dr. Kim, thank you very much indeed for being on this line. It's thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mention it. Yeah. Autumn. The season for reading has arrived. This app is for those who are increasingly interested in books. The app of the week is one line from a book. You can see information on books and users' comments at once. First, it helps you to select books with its bestseller rankings of the country's largest bookstore. The biggest characteristics of the app is that it enables a user to share a representative line of a book with other users. You can send the phrase of your choice to more than one million users.
a book you can meet with a phrase. You can experience many more books this autumn. Football and baseball matches are frequently played at night under artificial lights. However, these artificial lights can fatigue the players and even tire out the audience's eyes. So, a new form of stadium lighting has now evolved using plasma bulbs, which, it is claimed, fatigue neither the audience nor the players. So, let's take a look. Baseball or soccer games often take place after dark to draw more fans and viewers after work. Lighting is a central part of a stadium to host night games. South Korean technology has made a formidable foray into the sports lighting market that has so far been dominated by foreign names. A sports stadium in Anseong, Gyeonggi-do province. Here in a baseball stadium in Anseong, Gyeonggi-do province, teams of amateur baseball players practice ahead of a match. Lights are lit up as the dark starts to draw over the stadium. The baseball field at once becomes as bright as day, while elsewhere is surrounded by darkness. The stadium is equipped with a new lighting technology that is as close to natural solar light and lessens mistakes that often occurs in night games. 제가 뭐 다른 구장에 비해서 지금 안성 여기 야구장은 라이트가 되게 좀 밝아 가지고요. 뭐 뜬공 같은 거 처리할 때 원래 다른 구장에서는 좀 공을 놓치고 이랬는데 여기서는 공이 잘 보여 가지고 뭐 플레이하는 데도 전혀 지장이 없고요. 라이트가 굉장히 밝아 가지고 여기 뭐 야간 경기하기 때 가장 적합한 라이트인 것 같습니다. Night sports lighting was revolutionized by the commercialization of a technology called plasma lighting system. After a decade of development, this Korean household electronics brand finally succeeded in commercializing a new generation lighting system that is superior in light spectrum than any artificial light source without using any toxic and mercury materials. The plasma is the most important thing to see the sun. And then we have the fire when the fire is burning. That is the plasma. This plasma is the most important thing. 그 유리로 만든 그 벌브 유리 구 안에 그 특이한 그런 가스들을 그 입자들을 넣어 놓고 그 마이크로웨이브 파를 만들어서 그 유리 벌브 안에 있는 그 가스를 때려 주는 거죠. 때려 주면 그 가스가 상태가 변하면서 그 플라즈마 상태가 됩니다. 그래서 플라즈마 상태에서 빛이 나오는 거죠. 그리고 그걸 이제 우리 조명으로 활용하는 게 플라즈마 조명이 되겠습니다. A 50cm PLG bulb can illuminate a quantum of 180,000 lumens or brightness tantamount to 60 fluorescent light bulbs. The magic recipe behind the super bright plasma lighting is borrowed from electromagnetic radiation force which is also used to work a microwave. Magnetron이라는 그 마이크로웨이브를 발생시키는 장치가 있는데요. 이 마이크로웨이브가 도파관을 통해서 레조네이터 공진기로 다 모이게 됩니다. 그렇게든 공진기로 모인 모든 에너지가 그 전구에 있는 그 가스와 그 어, 가스를 그 운동을 그 시켜 갖고 이게 어느 정도 그 운동 에너지가 어느 정도 상태가 그 넘어가 버리게 되면은 그 플라즈마 상태로 됩니다. 플라즈마 상태로 되게 되면은 그 지속적인 그 빛을 발광을 하는 원리 원리를 이용을 했습니다. Unlike conventional electric light, which produces illumination through wire filaments heated to a high temperature by an electric current, plasma lighting does not need electrodes or a current conveyor because it can produce light directly from an arch discharge through microwave pressure. Unlike conventional light, the plasma lighting does not flicker or create an afterimage. This lessens the visual fatigue of artificial lighting for both players and viewers in the stadium. The spectrum chart shows that plasma lighting offers light in wavelengths similar to that of the sun. It offers the best possible outside lighting. 기존 조명하고는 뭐 상관이 뭐 이렇게 거의 뭐 비교가 되지 않을 정도로 그 태양광하고 거의 비슷해서 이 태양광하고 비슷하면 조명 아래서 보면 우리가 색깔이 좀 달리 보이잖아요. 
밤에 보는 거하고 낮에 보는 거하고 색깔이 좀 달리 보이는데 이 PLS 그러니까 플라즈마 조명 플라즈마 조명 아래서 보면은 색깔이 낮에 보는 거하고 거의 유사합니다. 밤에 이 조명을 켜놓고 운동을 하더라도 낮에 그 색깔하고 동일한 상황에서 그 운동을 할수 있다는 게큰 장점이죠. Along with its superiority and luminous efficiency, plasma lighting is highly economical because it lasts more than twice the lifespan of common lighting and can save electricity by more than 15%. 일단 조명에서 중요하게 생각하는 거는 초기 조도 초기 그 켰을 때그 조도가 언제까지 유지가 되는 거냐 어, 그 관점인데 이 플라즈마 조명 같은 경우는 그 2만 시간 이상을 보장을 하고 있습니다. 2만 시간이면은 보통 10년 이상을 말씀을 드리는 거고요. 그러니까 기존 기존의 스포츠 조명 같은 경우는 그 키고 한달 정도 지나면은 보통 70% 이하로 초기 조도가 떨어집니다. 그러니까 당연히 어두워지겠죠. The company is a late comer in the sports lighting market. But it's already creating a sensation with new generation lighting. It has already installed plasma lighting in a baseball stadium in Ichon, Gyeonggi-do province, as well as a soccer field in Argentina and golf field in Turkey. 그 차량 기지, 항만, 뭐 이런 쪽에도 그 피로도가 짙고 빛이 좋기 때문에 그런 쪽도 저희들이 공격 대상의 시장이 된다라고 이렇게 생각을 하고 있습니다. 아울러서 요그 LG 플라즈마 조명의 특징이 태양광하고 거의 유사한 그런 특징을 갖고 있기 때문에 태양광하고 관련되는 산업계의 생산 시설이든가 계측 시설 쪽에도 상당히 유용하게 적용될 수 있을 거다라고 생각하고 있고 그 적용하기 위해서 지금 관련 업체들하고 협상들을 하고 있습니다. The global sports lighting market is estimated at around 6 billion US dollars. We will watch how this latest Korean technology can compete in the field dominated by heavyweight foreign players. Counterfeits have long been a problem for currencies. Fake products have long been a problem for luxury brands. So now a Korean company has come up with a possible solution. What it is, is a series of codes which can be embedded in either a product or even in a banknote. This means that if, in the future, you believe you're receiving a dodgy product or some dubious money, you can scan these codes with your smartphone to assure yourself of their authenticity. But how far along is this technology? How widely might it be picked up? And how will it actually work? Well, Keep watching. From money, luxury goods to identification cards, the world is full of forgery and fakes. Various forgery and falsification crimes are losing ground because of the introduction of the latest information and communication technologies. We introduce you to the cutting edge technology that can easily prevent forgery and falsification using a smartphone app. Last month, a record high amount of counterfeit bills were found in a bank in downtown Seoul. 1,351 sheets of forged 50,000 won bills worth a whopping 62,792 US dollars were found. Forgeries are not only found in money, forgery crimes are also continuing to appear in various gift certificates, ID cards, like licenses, diplomas, and grade transcripts. But a new technology that enables us to easily detect various forgery crimes with a smartphone has been introduced. As soon as pointing the smartphone to the banknotes or gift certificates, patterns that weren't visible with the naked eye start to appear. In particular, it has further come under the spotlight by unveiling the world's first hidden quick response codes, which can only be seen through a smartphone. We cannot see anything on this piece of paper, but when we run the smartphone app, 
the hidden QR code appears and links to the product's website. A cutting-edge technology is hidden here. Using special security printing, it enables recognition of QR codes only through the smartphone app. 소비자가 구매 현장에서 부정한 제품을 구별해 낸다면 가짜를 만들거나 조작하는 사람들에게 대단한 심적 압박이 되겠죠. 이 기술은 화장품, 재과류, 자동차 부품 등의 포장 케이스 안심하고 먹을 수 있는 먹거리 포장과 친환경 인증 같은 다양한 인증서 등 작품을 막기 위한 모든 분야에 적은 비용으로 아주 효율적으로 적용될 수가 있습니다. This time, when we scan the ID card or gift certificate with the smartphone reader, hidden letters and pictures appear. This is smart seat technology that enables users to see hidden security patterns only through smart devices like smartphones. This technology can be used to prevent forgery of currency, gift certificates, and identification cards. A special security label has also been introduced. The label can verify authenticity of products by using a smartphone to scan the 2D barcodes inserted in the brand labels. The user can also check product information by scanning the barcode. The 2D barcode can hold data volume 10 times more than ordinary QR codes. It cannot be copied as it is encrypted. This is useful for labels of many luxury bags or cosmetics brands that have many fake products. This 2D barcode 안에는 고밀도가 되어 있기 때문에 많은 정보를 담을 수가 있고요. 그 다음에 암호화가 되어 있기 때문에 일반 다른 또 상용화된 QR 코드로는 복제를 할수 없는 그런 어떤 특성을 갖고 있습니다. 그래서 이러한 바코드를 사용할 경우에는 정보를 그 이름, 이름과 동시에 그 진품이 아니라 정품 인증까지 같이 할수 있는 기능이 포함되어 있다고 볼 수가 있겠습니다. The reason forgery crimes persist is because it is difficult for ordinary people to sort out imitations. As it is tough to detect them with the naked eye, they are helplessly falling victims to the crimes. Forgery crimes concerning Korea's highest denomination 50,000 won bills have been doubling each year. Fake goods that violated trademarks or crimes involving fake luxury goods have also been rising continuously. In the first eight months of this year, such crimes have already surpassed last year's levels. It was urgent to develop a technology that enables everyone to easily identify forgery without a separate device. Traditional market merchants find it quite useful to adopt smart seat technology, which finds hidden patterns with a smartphone. Onnuri gift certificates can be used as cash in Korean traditional markets. Taking advantage of crowds in the markets, there have constantly been crimes related to fake Onnuri gift certificates. After receiving an Onnuri gift certificate from a customer, the merchant scans the certificate with a smartphone. Then, patterns that weren't visible with the naked eye appear. The gift certificates have applied smart sea technology. If two fishes appear next to the Korean traditional hahe mask, it is a real onnuri gift certificate, and if not, it is fake. 근데 이번에 이렇게 스마트폰을 확인해 보니까 확인 방법도 간단하고 그래서 앞으로 아마 진품을 구별하는데 더 편리해질 것 같습니다. Comsco said it will open the technology to the private sector so that many companies can use it. It also plans to develop various technologies that enable people to more easily detect forgery using their smartphones without active gestures. 지금은 앱을 선택해서 본인이 확인을 해야만 가짜를 구별낼 수 있습니다만 스마트폰으로 읽는 순간 약속된 신호나 음성으로 진짜와 가짜를 알려주게 될 것입니다. 또한 IT 기술과의 융합을 통해 스마트폰을 해당 제품에 가까이 가져가기만 하면 가짜를 골라낼 수 있는 수준까지 개발될 것입니다. Forgery crimes are increasingly becoming sophisticated as technology advances. More rapidly developing cutting-edge information and communications technology is likely to block these forgery crimes instead of our eyes. It was an extraordinary moment. The highest level North Korean delegation in history arrived at one day's notice in Incheon for the closing ceremony of the Asian Games. Suddenly, 
inter-Korean ties looked incredibly promising. Then there was a firefight across the DMZ. And this was all taking place against the backdrop of rumors of ill health suffered by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. So what is the state of inter-Korean relations at this confusing time? Well, let's ask the experts. Three of the highest ranking and influential North Korean officials made a rare sudden visit to the South early this month. North Korea's top brass, including the second and third most powerful men, Vice Marshal Hwang byung seo and Choi ryong hye Secretary of the Party Central Committee, and Kim yang gun in charge of South Korean affairs, made a surprise last-minute visit to the closing event of the Incheon Asian Games on October 4th. 군을 총괄하는 총정치국장이 어떤 스포츠 행사에 참여했다. 이것은 어, 그쪽에 어, 어떠한 의도, 어, 남북관계 개선에 대한 의지가 좀 있다. 그리고 이런 것을 이런 스포츠 행사나 어, 지금 이렇게 잘된 것을 계기로 좀 동등한 선상에서 풀어보자. 이런 어떤 메시지를 어, 우회적으로 전달하기 위해서 왔다. South Korea and North Korea held their first high-level talks in seven years on the fortified border in February. But the breakthrough didn't last after North Korea turned belligerent in protest to the annual joint South Korea-U.S. military exercise that took place later in the month. North Korea lashed out vehemently at South Korean President Park Geun-hye for her remarks on North Korean human rights and nuclear issues made during her address to the United Nations General Assembly in September. Then a windfall arrived. The surprise visitors from Pyongyang proposed to hold the second round of high-level talks later in October or early November. 북한은 올해 중국과의 관계가 뭐 불편해지는 그런 상황에서 어, 남한과의 관계까지 경색되는 것에 대해서는 상당히 큰 부담감을 가지고 있었다고 볼수 있습니다. 지금 뭐 북한의 뭐 북쪽 국경 그리고 남쪽 국경 뭐에 인접해 있는 두 국가들과의 관계가 모두 악화된다고 하면은 북한은 뭐 지리적으로도 상당히 심각한 이제 불안감을 느끼지 않을 수 없을 겁니다. It is always hard to tell with North Korea with its expertise in disguising charm offensive. Kim Jong-un이 뭐 경제 분야에서는 Kim Jong-un보다 훨씬 뭐 개혁적이고 개방적인 그런 경향을 가지고 있는데 어, 북한이 그 남한의 관광객을 대상으로 개발한 뭐 금강산 지역에 뭐 남측의 관광객이 들어오지 않으면은 어, 과거에 뭐 투자했던 것에 뭐큰 손실이 발생할 수밖에 없고요. The mood s u d d e n But inter-Korean relationship never has been smooth and easy because of North Korea's erratic ways. This time also may not be any different. Dual track and two-phase policy is its signature strategy on South Korea. 남북한의 어떤 신뢰의 수준이라는 것이 어, 그다지 에, 높지 않고. 또 어, 북한의 어떤 내부의 문제도 좀 있지 않겠느냐는 생각도 들고요. After jointly hosting long-awaited reunions of family members from the Korean War in late February, North Korea fired off short-range missiles into the East Sea. Also in 2009, North Korea launched its second nuclear test just four hours after sending a conciliatory message for the passing of South Korea's former president, No Mu Hyun. The same old routine was replayed. The much-touted momentum from the high-level trip lost grounds after a North Korean patrol vessel crossed over the northern limit line, the de facto sea border between the two countries, three days after the visitors returned home. The two sides exchanged multiple rounds of shots into the water near the vessel. South Korea warned North Korea against a series of military provocations, yet, maintain that doors of dialogue remain open. 전쟁 중에도 대화는 필요하다는 말이 있듯이 한반도 긴장 완화와 평화 정착을 위해서는 대화가 지속되어야 합니다. 고위급 접촉을 남북 남북 관계 개선의 기회로 삼아야 합니다. The signs are too mixed. 
and it is premature to determine what momentum the inter-Korean relations are on at this stage. At such transitional times, it is better to exercise patience and discretion. 일정한 부분에 있어서는 인도적인 부분에 있어서는 일정한 진전도 이루어질 수 있지 않을까. 관계 개선에 대한 의지 요인을 발견하기가 쉽지 않다면 남북 간 관계는 또 지금과 같은 원칙론 사이의 갈등 국면이 지속되는 아니면 그보다도 더 어떤 쌍방 간의 갈등이 보다 더 고조되는 그런 국면이 전개되는 그런 시나리오도 전개될 수 있지 않을까라는 그런 두 가지 가능성 모두 열어두고 봐야 되지 않겠는가라는 생각이 듭니다. The outlook for inter-Korean relations remains zigzag and foggy, but that North Korea is intent on returning to the dialogue table is pretty clear from the recent visit by high-level officials. What could be essential from now on is how hard the two work to build upon the hard-won momentum. And that's all we have time for on BizLine this week. But do join us again next week when it's going to be Hello Handsome. Now, middle-aged men in Korea right now are sucking in their guts and spending big on personal grooming. And this has captured the attention of the fashion industry, which is responding appropriately. So next week, we'll meet some of these middle-aged mincers and find out what's going on. On the macro front, we'll be looking at Japan's Arbonomics and find out what impact it has had and what impact it will have on the Korean economy. So do join us next week. But that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.